I'm on my way to see some old friends. Now, these guys aren't just friends to me, they're friends to so many different animals who really need help. Chris is responding to a call from Pam O'Hearn, who runs Edgar's Mission, an animal sanctuary located about an hour out of Melbourne. Hello, Pam. Hey, Chris, how are you, how you doing? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Now, I can't wait to see what you've got for me. Oh, uh, it's a special one, this one. I've yeah. never seen anything like it before, Chris. OK. All right, which way is he? Up here, she's still in bed with her friends. Yeah. Edgar's mission, really, by their nature, sees some pretty extreme cases. So for them to call me out, given the fact that the staff here are pretty good at what they do, this must be a case that is out of the ordinary. Hmm. Well, yeah. She doesn't have hooves. No, <laughs> a bit of a technical hitch here. I want to say she has a hoof problem. It's actually, she doesn't have a hoof problem because she doesn't have a couple of hooves. Um, this one and that one, she doesn't have any hooves. This one, she only has one toe. As you know, they normally have two toes, like a little back foot there. So we only have one toe here and, and nothing on these ones. She has wow. Stumps. Oh. So on the right side, she has no hooves at all. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Left side, the back, she has a hoof, but here, yeah. this one's that's not even right one. either. That's right, yeah. I can categorically say I've never seen anything like this before, not even close. The way a hoof normally works is it's kind of like a shoe. You have a protective outer layer, like the rubber in a shoe, and you have the inner layer, which is the cushioning, like the foam. With Charity, she has the foam, but no rubber. This is a severe case. Well, the thing is that her feet like that, she's going to have lameness probably every week of her life. Mm. And as you know, with sheep or any sort of ruminant, they can't lie down. Mm. If they lie down, they die. Mm. They have to be upright, moving around, feeding mm. for their gut to work, for everything in their body to, to function. Mm. So lameness isn't an option for her. Mm. Clearly, she can't go on the way that she is, and we need to find her something that will actually give her a quality of life so she can get out there, run around the farm, and enjoy life with her other sheepy friends. Can I just see her walk? Yep. I'd love to actually see what we're, what we're up against here. Come on, Charity. Come on, Charity, come on. Come on, girl. She essentially hops onto that back left leg, supports her while she very gently tiptoes across on those other legs. Good girl. She's a brave girl. She is a brave girl. She wants to live. Yeah. I mean, I want to give her every chance, but it has to be worthwhile for her. I mean, she's got to have a good quality of life. And my worry with her and the way her feet are is that being lame and sore and, and uncomfortable and not being able to walk across grass or, or rocks, that's not a life for a sheep. No, it's not. it has to be a life worth living. It does. Yeah. yeah, it has to be a life worth living. The rather sobering reality is that without any sort of help for charity, this lameness would only get worse. She's struggling now and she's young. So you can imagine, given a few months, years if we're lucky, she wouldn't be able to move around. And for a sheep, that means she doesn't survive. He's very dehydrated, look at that. His skin is just staying there and not flicking back like it should. That's horrible, sweetie. Where have you been? At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, emergency vet Dr Lisa Chimes is confronted with a distressing case. This little puppy's just come in. He was found in a cardboard box on the side of the road. I need to have a good look at him to make sure that he's not unwell. Okay, that all sounds good. No murmur. So that's good. His belly just is so bloated. I reckon you've got a belly full of worms, mister. The young orphan is malnourished and suffering from diarrhoea. 
Lisa is concerned that the tiny stray may be carrying the deadly parvovirus, a highly contagious disease common in young pups that have not been vaccinated. So I think we really need to do a parvovirus test. I don't think he's vaccinated, and if he's got parvovirus, it could spread through this hospital. Are you OK? OK, little guy. All right. Sorry, honey. I know. I just got to get this sample. I know. You're OK. You're OK. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. OK, come on. It will take eight minutes before the test will confirm if the pup is carrying the virus. While Lisa waits for the results, she looks for any other clues as to what has made this stray so ill. Big bloated belly, huh, buddy? He's just so skinny. He's very skinny. Hey, you're totally malnourished, buddy. So I think in the meantime, let's give him some worming medication, treat yep. him for fleas, at least we can treat the treatable for now, it's going to make him feel a lot better and Definitely. hopefully get him on his way and just wait for that parvo test to come back. Yeah. When I look at this little puppy, I see a tiny little life that's skin and bones, full of fleas and completely neglected. It just breaks my heart. The parvovirus test is now complete. If the result is positive, the future looks grim for the baby orphan. If he's got parvovirus, we might be obligated to actually put him down. I really hope that it doesn't come back as positive. Oh. Good girl. So you've tried padded shoes, you've tried bandaging, and they're not really doing the trick. That's right, yeah. At Edgar's mission in country Victoria, little Charity is in desperate need of help. The six-month-old was born with a rare deformity, two missing hooves. If left untreated, the future looks bleak for the young lamb. I've never seen anything like this before. Where there should be two hard hooves, there's nothing. Just a stump and a bit of skin. The fact is, the longer things stay the way they are, the worse it gets for charity. I mean, she can't stay inside a shed for the rest of her life. I mean, I, I want to see her out in the sunshine. Yeah. But to get to the sunshine, if you look out there, we've got those pebbles there. I mean, would she be able to walk across those? No. The other thing, and I, I'm hesitant about giving so many downers here, but when she walks, she has to compensate on this leg, this back one that actually has the hoof. Yeah. Probably more worrying than that, she actually has to compensate and put a lot of weight on this front left leg, which yeah. has a hoof, but a deformed hoof. Yeah. It's just hard to know what we can actually do from here because her body's not built to last right now. No. Let's have a look. Oh. At Sash, Lisa is worried this tiny pup is carrying an extremely contagious and dangerous disease. I mean, if he does have parvo and he's a stray, we might even have to consider putting him down. OK, so let's have a look. Yay! It's negative. Yay! No parvovirus, Bubby. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Definitely a good outcome. And don't you lick my face with those worms. No, I don't want worms. The good news is that this little puppy has got treatable problems. He's malnourished, so we're going to feed him. We're going to give him a whole lot of TLC, which he clearly needs. Hey, buddy, do you want some of this? You don't want it in the bowl? Do you want it outside? But the malnourished pup is refusing to eat. He doesn't want any of it, and I'm surprised. It looks like he hasn't eaten in ages. You, you would expect that he'd be tucking into it, but he's just not interested. Come on, bad. Suddenly, Lisa discovers sorry, she's dealing with a picky pup. He likes the chicken. He only wants some chicken. OK, OK. OK. Look at him. Oh, my Annie. gosh. Annie. And, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. You bit me. 
Oh my gosh! When this little dog first came in, he was quiet and submissive, and then when the chicken comes out, he turns completely mad. He is laying into my gloves, pulling on my fingers. I need more chicken, people. Quickly! Gloves are being eaten. Oh my god! Ouch! I think that this little street dog's problem is that he's got an expensive appetite. He's a piranha. That would suit him, piranha. <laughs> we'll call him piranha. Perfect. I'm going with piranha. <laughs> it's very, very suitable. <laughs> the dog likes human flesh. <laughs> he hurts. Look, he's got my glove. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> hey, you're a little piranha chomping on my finger. You see that? I don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate having my glove chomped off. It's bad manners. We're trying to feed you and you rip my glove off. You're it's tired. been a big day for Piranha. Sleep. And with nowhere for the homeless pup to go, Poor Lisa little decides little. to keep him at Sash overnight. Have a good sleep. <coughs> All right, bud? We'll get you a nice big comfy cage. But it's only a temporary solution. The harsh reality is without a permanent home, this stray's future is uncertain. I'm really upset this dog doesn't have a microchip, which means that we have no way of finding his owners, no way of tracing them. And our only option is ultimately, he's gonna probably end up at the pound. It's just hard to know what we can actually do from here because her body's not built to last right now. At Edgar's mission, Chris is dealing with charity, a sheep born without two hooves. I'm already starting to think of ways that I can break it to Pan that, look, there isn't anything more we can do. When all of a sudden, I remember something. Oh, there is something that I have seen done. And I've seen it done overseas. And I don't want to get your hopes up about this because I'm not even sure if, if it's something we can do. But how do you feel about looking into prosthetic hooves? Wow. You reckon they'll work? Well, <laughs> we've kind of got no other option because there's nothing else that's going to be firm enough to support her on rough ground. Yeah. Otherwise, she's going to be like this, down on the front for the rest of her life. And that's not a life. No. My worry is that I may have spoken too soon because the fact is, unless Charity is fit and well enough to really get through the next few years, then there's no point putting her through prosthetic hooves. Church. Oh, there you go. These joints here, they're actually pretty good. And it's the same in this one. She's got young lamb legs. I think she looks healthy enough for us to try. Good. Good news, Charity. Because what I'm suggesting isn't going to be easy and isn't going to be something that she can adapt to straight away. It is still going to be a lot of hard work. It's not a magic fix. But she needs to be up for the fight. We'll do everything we can to help you, Charity. I'll make some phone calls, OK? Is that OK with you? Hmm? See what we can do. If Chris's plan works, it will be the first time prosthetics have been fitted to a lamb in Australia. And for Pam, it's going to be an anxious wait. Charity is incredibly important. We have over 300 animals here at the sanctuary at the moment and every one of them is important to me. We have to give them a life worth living. And this is really what we have to do for charity. Hello. Rise and shine. At Sash, Lisa is checking in on Piranha. The malnourished stray arrived last night after being found in a box on the side of the road. Hi. When I look at this little puppy and I see those big eyes staring back at me, it just breaks my heart. 
Ah, oh, big yawns. At six to eight weeks old, a puppy should either be with its mother or with a loving family, not in a cardboard box on the side of the road. Looking much brighter. Piranha is looking so much better today. When he came in last night, he was really quiet. He hadn't eaten for a while. He was ravenous. And now he's a lot more settled and a lot happier. So I'm really glad with his progress. That yummy? You keep playing with your toy. I'm not going to feed you now because I actually want my fingers intact. Yeah, I don't want any chomping on my fingers anymore. Thank you very much. So I've got someone that I can call that might be able to help you. With no home, the pound could have been the only option. But Lisa has a plan. Hi, Alan. It's Lisa Chimes from SASH. As much as we'd all love him to stay at SASH forever, I have to now make some plans where he's going to go next. So I'm going to call my friends at the Animal Welfare League to see if they will look after Piranha for the next week. So I've got a big favour to ask. I've got this little puppy here and I'd really love if you guys could see if his owners come forward and then if not, can you find him a new home? Oh, great. It's the news Lisa was hoping for. The Animal Welfare League will now take custody of Little Piranha until they're able to find him a permanent home. Hi, I'm here to get the puppy that Lisa rang me about. Not a problem, just take a seat. I'll let her know that you're here. Thank you. Thanks. Come on, well, let's go meet Alan. We'll bring your friend with for the visit, okay? You love him, don't you? You love that friend. Alan's waiting. Should we go meet him? Let's go. Hi, Alan. Oh, my God. This is so Piranha. Tiny. Hello, you. Hello. What a beautiful little thing. Fantastic. I can't wait to, to find this forever home for this little guy. Well, you've got, you've got two that you're going to have to find a forever home for. Really? Him. Oh, and that's his companion. It's his friend. Oh, that's fantastic. He's fallen in love with him in hospital, oh. so I'm going to give it to him as a present. Oh, that's take beautiful. To his new home. Oh, wow, he's so tiny. Thank <laughs> you so much. We'll definitely make sure we find the right home. I'm sure you will. This beautiful little thing. I just love warm and fuzzy cases like this. Uh, you're tiny. You're so tiny. It's such a big personality. Look at you. This little puppy arrived malnourished in a cardboard box. We gave him some TLC, some medical treatment, and now he's going off with Alan from the Animal Welfare League to find a brand new home. It couldn't get any better. Hi, Charity. Nope. So do you have to break it to them? They all can't come along. Oh, I think you can break it to them, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> You're travelling bad, isn't it? <laughs> Support network, family. Yeah, well, just like us, they like friends. Yeah. <laughs> Chris has returned to Edgar's mission in country Victoria with good news for Pam and her beloved lamb, Charity. Charity, come on. Come on, go. The little lamb was born with two missing hooves, Sorry. making it extremely oh. difficult to walk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Chris and Pam are now heading to a specialist vet who can help fit the lame lamb with prosthetic hooves. I guess the good thing about being a vet for a few years is that you have built up a few contacts. Finally, I find someone that actually does this work in Australia. The prosthetics are still made in the US, but the first step can be done here. Timmy the sheep is coming along to provide support for charity. You don't see this every day moral support sheep in the back of the ambulance for sheep. Charity and her best friend Timmy are now on their way to the vet practice in Whittlesea, where the first stages of making the life-saving prosthetics will take place. In order for prosthetics to be successful, they have to be modelled exactly to the specifications of the individual patient. So today, it's all about creating a cast. From there, they can make a mould and make these hooves. Charity. Right. Come on, girl. Come on, Charity. Come on, girl. Good girl. It's Come like on. dogs and cats, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Good girl. Hey, Lisa, right? Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see this you. is Pam. Hi, Pam. Hi, Lisa. Pleased to meet you. And obviously, this is Charity right here. Hi, Charity. 
Dr Lisa Weldon will be carrying out the first stage of Charities Prosthetics. So thank you so much for putting us here. Now where do we need to head? Come this way. Okay. Come on now. Charity. Come on. This is all good. Let's go. Charity is an unusual case. We've not put prosthetics on, on a sheep previously. Um, Timmy was in front of you to walk. What I love is that even though Charity is a sheep, the moment she walks into a vet clinic, she's just like any other dog and cat. Puts the brakes on, does want to move. But that's where the moral support sheet comes in. Enter Timmy. That's the way. Follow Timmy. Follow this Timmy. This is why you have Timmy. This is why we have Timmy. With Charity happy to be guided by her best buddy, Lisa can now begin the first steps in developing the prosthetic hooves. I'm just going to need some photos. You just need her standing naturally, is that it? Yep. yep. Charity needs photos taken of each leg, front and to the side. By doing that, they work out exactly how a leg stand in a normal position. This information is crucial. OK, All so right. now... Up on the table. You all right with her? Yep. But suddenly, Charity is not prepared to go along with the plan. I'm really going to need my wits about me today. I'm on my way to meet Jace, who owns Hunter Valley Zoo, and he needs a hand moving some alligators. It could be an interesting day. Australian Reptile Park General Manager Tim Faulkner is on his way to another zoo in the Hunter Valley. Good morning, mate. Good morning, Timmy. How are you, mate? Good. What's going on? Mate, I need a hand with these gators. They give me some grief. Are they? Where yeah, are they? Down in the park. I know. Let's, Let's go. go. I've asked Tim to come to the Hunter Valley Zoo today to give us a hand. We've got seven young gators here that uh, originally come from the reptile park. And what happened in the last couple of weeks, I think, they like, have tunnelled underground in the edge of the, the dam wall. So we need to get these guys out without anybody getting injured. The gators need to be moved urgently. So you've called me up to help you get the seven gators that we set up here. Yeah. And then you're going to move them into here. Game plan is to drain this, get them out of here, backfill it, and then eliminate the problem. Yeah, beautiful. Look, he's dropping now. Straight under. Yep. Right into that burrow. Show you no burrow with these mates, I'd reckon. They know where to go. You got that pump? Yep, ready to go. Right, let's Start get Start her up. When gators hibernate, they naturally want to dig and put themselves into a burrow. Now, there's two reasons that that's a problem here. Firstly, the keepers can't see them daily to make sure that they're OK. And more importantly, this burrow could collapse. That would crush and kill them all. As the water's going down, we're seeing the size of this burrow a lot bigger than what I expected. All good? Chase, you and I are going to catch the gators? Yes, mate. Yeah? What do you yeah. want to do then? Then we've got a couple of guys here to wash. OK. So we're going to catch them, pass them over yep. the fence. Yep. Boys are going to wash them down, get them into the clean pool. Tim and Jason have to be vigilant. One wrong move could result in disaster. That's a good-sized gator. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Oh, don't go backwards, buddy. Even though these gators are only a few years old, they can still pack a nasty bite. Have it to the boys and we'll come back for the next. Got him? Wash him yep. up and get him looking good for the new pool. OK. The first two should be pretty easy. They're outside of the burrow and they're close enough that I can just reach down come here, mate. and grab a tail. Ooh, whip it that hand. Mate. Yep. I'm there. Yep, yep, up. The third gator's sitting right in the middle of the pool. I can't reach his tail. OK, here we go. So I'm going to use a pole and rope and put a noose either over his snout or head and then take him up the bank onto the grass. Settle down, buddy. Settle down. So far, we've managed to stay pretty clean, but all the gators that were out have now been caught. The next four are down in the burrow. The shoes need to come off. We're getting dirty. Up on the table. You right with her? Yeah. At the vet clinic in Whittlesea, Chris is trying to do a casting for Charity's prosthetic hooves. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. That was a very foreign position for her. Yeah, but she, she's not going to like it. Okay. Good girl, Charity. Right? I'll make it with your wife. 
it's important to try to match up the angles we saw in the photographs with those angles in the legs. Once we have those feet in the normal position, then we can start the casting. So once we start wrapping, yep. if everyone that's gloved, we just need to rub it down so it, it sticks to itself. And we've got fairly limited time once the fiberglass goes on. Um, well, to get it stuck and shaped, yes. The casting has quite a few steps. First of all, the leg is wrapped in plastic, really to protect it from the fiberglass. This really is going to form the framework of the prosthetics. So we need to get this up into the angle that she lives at. Yep. yep. Going to open it. We're at 105. It's the same angle as in the photo. Yep. So we need to make sure we don't have any rotation. We have to get this right because this artificial hoof has to fit like a glove. Now that should come off. Beautiful. One done. One sheep foot. She almost looks normal at that angle. <laughs> Just missing some feet. So the other leg now? Other leg now. How many degrees? 140. So the angle is there. That's the right angle. We should be right to... It's not exactly a normal situation for a sheep to be in. In a dog and cat vet hospital, on a table. Having a cast put on, yet yeah, she's asleep. <laughs> wow. Yep, oh. we're finished. Yeah. Apparently we have. <laughs> so she says. She knew. Yep. Everything's happened pretty quickly today, but now we have casts that we're very happy with. So even though your eyes were shut, you, you were watching, weren't you? Yeah, she knew. You knew when it was up. So you happy with that, Lisa? Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, great. From here they get sent off to the US to be measured up and turned into prosthetics. It's probably the trickiest part now, the waiting, but hopefully in a few weeks we get a good result. So once we get Charity's magic shoes from the US, we'll be ready to go. Right, look forward to it. Yeah. See you later. Go on, cheapies. Time to get the boots off and get in. Yep. No gators in here. Well, I'll let you go in first. Jeez, that's not pretty. At the Hunter Valley Zoo, Tim and zoo owner Jason are attempting to relocate seven young alligators from their pond. I can see a tail. Yep. And a pointy end. So far, three of the gators have been moved to their temporary home. But the remaining four have retreated deep into the burrow. Jeez, I don't like putting a hand in there. I'm going to try and put a rope around the tail. That'll give us a bit more to pull on and hopefully get it out. These young alligators can't be underestimated. They're about a metre and a half in length, but they are full of muscle. When they have an explosion of energy, really difficult to hang on to. Oh, got him. That's got him. Let's go. Yep. OK, let's go right up to oh, oh. Just watch for it to swing, eh? Back up. One more. Strong Got him. Yep. One, two. Three. Three. You all right, boys? Yep. yep. All yours. I'm grabbing number five. I could get lucky. I put the rope in there, close to the gator, and it bites it. Bang. Right on the rope. Noose pulls tight, and out she comes. Bring him out a bit. Yep. That rope's going to slip. A bit more to you. OK, I'm going to take that rope off. Yeah, mate. There we go. The last two gators, they're right back in the burrow. And we can only see glimpses of them. Now it gets hard. Give it a pull. You got him? Yep. Where are we? Got, yep, we've got him. We've been trying to get the seven gators out of this pond for over an hour now. We've got one left, and it's a problem. We can't even see it. We don't even know where it is. We're filling this pond back in, so he's got to come out. Okay. Hold on, what's that? 
I can see him. We found him. Now we know where the head is, but there's only one way to get him. I gotta go in that burrow. The plan is, if I can grab tail, I will. Yep. If not, I'll try and move it where we can get a rope. Yep. But either way, mate, if I sing out, please drag me out by the legs. Yep, will do, mate. Tim is about to try to move the last of seven American alligators. His eyes are there looking at us. But this feisty boy isn't interested in moving to his new pool. You are right, mate? I'm right inside the burrow. It's dark, muddy, wet, and there's an alligator in here. This is risky, and it's really difficult. Yeah, you got it, Dale. Okay, mate, I've got right. it. I need help out. Okay. Help me out. Help out. All right. Watch him. I've got his tail, and I can see his head, and I'm just watching that he doesn't swing around. Now, Jace comes in, his hands are on, it's time to pull him out. But that's not easy. We're stuck, knee-deep in mud. Help out. All right. Finally, after a major struggle... Well, our little guy's proven the toughest. The toughest. The gator is out. Yeah. The smallest <laughs> was the hardest. <laughs> he had himself buried in there. Hello, mate. Wow. We hand over the last gator for a wash down. That's it, job done and job done well. A bit hairy for a minute, but ended up fine. Lucky last. Lucky last. Away you go. He's on. Well done. These gators have gone from a natural pond into a small artificial pond, but that's temporary. They're young, and once they grow a bit bigger, they can be moved to the big dam with the rest of the gators. Good on you, mate. Well done. Job well done. Job well done. Thanks, Timmy. It was great to get Tim up today. We got a little bit muddy and a bit dirty, but we got the gators moved and the job's done. Hello. Hi Chris, how you doing? Big day's here, huh? Yeah, big it's good day. To see you. Good, good going. How are you going? Good. Got the crew? Of course. At the vet practice in Whittlesea, it's been six oh, weeks we since go. the plaster casts of Charity's deformed legs were sent to America. Get a bit of a trade up on those shoes today. <laughs> today, the seven month old lamb finally gets to try on her new prosthetic hooves. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. It's trade up time. Uh, come on, Charity. Timmy might have to lead the way. Come on, Timmy. Come on, Timmy. We've been really anxious about today. The days have been building up and um, it's a big day for charity and hoping it's all going to go well. A lot's riding on today. Hey, Lisa, Hi. how are you going? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. The anxious wait's over. I hope so. I hope they fit. Well, don't tempt fate. They're going to fit. <laughs> they have to fit. All right, come on through. I suppose the difficulty with this is going to be how easily does she manage to put up with new feet. I have no idea how it's going to go. All right. It's time to reel a new look. Let's get it, let's get it going. So the socks go over first, I guess, just to avoid any, any rubbing. Well, to make cleaning easier, they've made them without the padding. Yep. We put the socks on to be the padding. Okay, so we lock the back piece in, then we get the front on. Which almost hinges on. Okay, so we're on. All right. You ready Let's for your see. first steps? Ready. It's going to feel strange. You ready, Charity? There you go. This is the critical moment, and everyone is on edge. Wow. She's almost <laughs> reaching out, searching for it. Because well, she's just be not used to having that. that a few centimetres taller than she used to be. Yeah. She's taking big, exaggerated steps, first of all, just to almost find her feet. But then, after a few laps, she's got it. It's incredible. It's pretty good, That's isn't it? It's quite an adjustment. I mean, she is that much taller. And she reaches out almost to test if that's really there, but she I've finds I've seen the dogs feet. put them on and shake and be bothered by them, and she's just chilled about it. Mm. It's a positive start for the young lamb, but now for an even bigger test. All right, you ready? Let's go. This back hoof is posing a lot more problems simply because it has that joint there that mimics the hock, the ankle in the sheep. That has to be right, otherwise she just won't be able to walk normally. Clips in there. Sticks there. That one's no crack. How does that one feel? 
Look at you, huh? You're a bit fancy now, aren't you? Wanna give it a try? That one's a bit more serious. Yeah. This is really the critical moment because she has to adjust to the new way of walking and she has to do it quickly. I'm not quite sure where her legs are. No. Charity is struggling to adapt to the second prosthetic. Yeah, it's taking some getting used to, isn't it? Oh my God, she's got it. Wow, what a difference. You know who's the biggest help in all of this? Timmy. Timmy's been fantastic, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's just providing that inspiration to walk. She got to know that sensation of her feet being where they were meant to be, but she walked into it beautifully. Oh, I'm just so proud of my sheep. I really am just so proud of Charity. Hey, Charity. Well, my friend. You look incredible. You do. You look amazing. The way you're walking, Extraordinary. <laughs> but before the celebrations can truly begin, the lamb has one final test. So she's mastered the concrete. I think it's time to see how she goes in the real stuff, back <laughs> in the farm. Yep. Yeah. Showing them off to her friends. The fact is, it's all well and good that she can walk around here in a very controlled environment, but she has to be able to walk properly, on grass, back at the farm. That could be her biggest test. Just outside of Sydney, Boy. it's great news for little orphan pup Piranha. Not only does he have a new home, but a new name as well. Jesse, come on, chase the ball. Jesse is now Bruce's best mate. Oh, he means a lot. He's sort of just a member of the family now. So, just another one of the family. <laughs> my brother Brian and his wife Jade, and my niece and nephew Lacey and Chase, they just live next door and yeah, they love coming around. And, playing with Jesse all the time. And I think he loves playing with them too. Run. <laughs> now he's got you. Yeah, Jesse's a lucky boy, but so are we, because he's a good little dog, good little bear out. I love him so much. He's your friend now, is he? Yeah? Charity. Come on. Good walking. Charity is now home at Edgar's Mission, where she's about to try out her new hooves. This is really a big moment because we need to see how these new hooves really tolerate the real world. A paddock with ups, with downs, with soft parts, with hard parts, and with grass. Something she's never done before on these hooves. There's a little welcome home party over here. Oh, looks like you're getting a bit of pace up. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Charity's just nearly running. These boots aren't made for walking. They're clearly made for running. What's that? Look at you. Mm. Now, for her to be out in the sunshine, on the grass, eating, socialising, it's, it's a different life already, isn't it? It's amazing to think that you can have this quality of life. And if you're a sheep, you have to be out enjoying the grass with your buddies. And today we've achieved that. The amazing work you guys do, you don't have to look far to see some lives that have been turned around. I remember this one turning me around. <laughs> Gretel, yeah. <laughs> Last year I was given the seemingly simple task of trimming Gretel's hooves. Normally with cows like this that weigh six, seven hundred kilos, they're in charge. They're the boss here. But here, the odds are a little bit more in our favour. Yeah. You'd think three-legged cow off balance should be simple. It wasn't. I'm just going to get the things into a nose. Oh. Yep. Didn't really get the things in the nose. <laughs> Are you going, Gretel? Yeah. Are you looking? Chris? I ain't going to mess with you again. And if she can get by on three legs. Charity can get by on two plus two. 
Even though Pam will say she's lucky to have animals like Charity and Gretel, the fact is all the animals here at Edgar's Mission are so incredibly fortunate to have Pam in their corner because without her, they might have never had a second chance. Well, it looks like these new hooves have opened up a whole new world. Look at her. She just cannot get enough. It's just wonderful. We can't thank you enough, Chris, for getting this outcome for, um, for our very special girl. Well, you're the reason they're here, and you're the reason they actually have a second chance, so the thank you goes to you. Shucks. <laughs> I am a little bit overwhelmed today to see Charity from where she came from when she first presented to us with the hooves missing, to see her now have actually I've been able to fulfil my promise to her that I would give her a life worth living. I didn't think it was really achievable to start with, but we've done it. it it's a great feeling. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.